Hi everyone, Charles from The Food People here. I hope you're all keeping safe and well. It's my great pleasure to welcome chef and founder of Star Chefs, David Swan. David joins us to talk about the founding inspiration behind his concepts, unsung chef talent, and the role of chef and restaurant meal kits in the post-COVID world. In addition, he'll be discussing how to manage and elevate that in-home meal box experience, some of the exciting collaborations uh, that he's working on and his hopes for home dining experiences into the future. So welcome, David, and thank you so much for joining me today as part of the Food People in Conversation with series. Hi, Charles. Thank you for having me. Um, really excited to talk to you today about Star Chefs and tell you a little bit about we're, what we're about. Great stuff. At The Food People, we're very clear about why we do what we do. We're champions of change, driven every day by our intent to shift the future of food and drink by harnessing the power of trends. And this In Conversation With series is all about talking to others across the food and drink spectrum to find out more about why they do what they do, how in their way they're championing change and shifting the future of food and drink. David, once again, it's great to be speaking to you today. I wonder if we can just start with you worked in many different aspects of the food industry. What inspired you to get into the industry in the first place? Um, I think from a from a very young age, you know, I was cooking with my nan and my mum, you know, from kind of 11, 12. And then, you know, the kind of real inspiration came from people like Gary Rhodes, Rick Stein, mm -hmm. um, Ken Hom. Yeah. You know, uh, so growing up watching those on TV from such a young age, you know, I remember probably being 11 years old and, and coming to, you know, living out of London, come to Soho with my mum to buy a wok because oh, they amazing. didn't exist in Berkshire. Um, so I think really it was watching those chefs, you know, and I still think collectively, although, you know, Gary has passed, you know, they were probably some of the best chefs to have, uh, have been on TV and showcased great food and cooking. And are there, are there any kind of memorable, memorable dishes that any of those, um, that you saw any of those uh, chefs or individuals create that still stick with you today? Yeah, it's making me funny now think about that. I mean, really interesting. One of the Gary Road series, you know, he did some crazy things at the time. I remember him cooking uh, a whole side of salmon in a dishwasher. And there was another <laughs> one where he cooked it in one of his cars. You know, again, he was a bit like James Martin, you know, real mad on cars. But, you know, some of the Gary Rhodes books, you know, I did a lot of desserts out there. The Jaffa cake is um, yes. iconic and, uh, and I think loved by everybody. I still use his um, uh, baked suet pudding recipe today that's uh, one very occasionally have in the winter and always go to his british i think it's called british classics british classics yeah White yeah. yeah incredible no he was uh, an absolute master yeah so taking us to today then you founded um star chefs can you explain what star chefs is all about yeah so we're we're really a platform to connect uh chef talent with the consumer okay um and then we provide kind of great and unique food experiences or food and drink experiences. The idea was kind of born to be a retail line, uh, but I think during COVID there seemed an opportunity for meal kits and, you know, having a connection and a, and a good base with a lot of these great chefs, uh, there was an opportunity to provide incredible food experiences for people at home. And, and can I ask you, what, what was your kind of founding inspiration, that kind of light bulb moment? And I suppose why, why you feel now is the, is, the, is the right time? Many, many years ago, um, about 10 years ago, I worked for Marks and Spencer as a quality and innovation chef. And I think during that time, you know, I think Heston had probably recently signed with Waitrose. Uh, Jamie had obviously done some of his Sainsbury's opportunity. And I thought, you know, there's a gap in the market, not to showcase one chef, but many chefs and, um, you know, have, have ideally kind of the best chef at each cuisine showcased in their food. Yeah, okay. You know, so obviously someone Italian doing a kind of Italian range and so on. Um, and so really it was kind of born of that idea that, uh, you know, some kind, of, some kind of way that multiple chefs can showcase their food and really the consumer gets the best food from all of the chef talent in the UK. And, and, and why for you is now the right time? I mean, we're uh, right, we're coming out of it now, but we've been in the global pandemic. So what, why now? Well, I think for a long time, you know, I, I guess my career has taken some, some different kind of routes along the years. This idea has always kind of stuck with me, you know, so it's always been something that I'm seriously passionate about. I tried to kind of get it off the ground, you know, 12 years ago, didn't quite work out. Um, and last year I lost a role as a big kind of head of food role 
And I just thought, you know, now is really a great opportunity for me to, to try this and drive it. And um, I think the opportunity was right for many people. So obviously myself being, being at home, consumers being at home, um, I think the demand was obviously there. And then also the talent to potentially fulfill, yeah. to fulfill that. So actually, I just think the whole kind of full circle um, really came around and was quite timely. Okay. Yeah. And I, I know you've talked to me about, and you know, if I, if I look at how you position yourself, you talk a lot about a unique restaurant quality dining experience in your home. What does that, what does that mean? I think we try and showcase something different and um, you know, we want to be the best. We want to showcase the best chefs, the best talent and the best food. Um, and, you know, really the product and quality and the kind of integrity is the most important thing to us. And the same with the chefs. You know, we wouldn't be working with Tom Aitkins if it wasn't superior. Mm -hmm. um, and I think a lot of the meal kits that people are doing over lockdown is, you know, a braised piece of beef, a pom puree, a vegetable garnish and a nice sauce um, and maybe a very simple dessert. And Yes, it has been potentially overseen by a top chef, but I don't think it's unique. And I think we like to potentially do something different and, um, you know, something that you can't do at home. And it just has to be exceptional of great quality. Uh, beyond a basic meal kit, how do you see the experience element of in-home evolving into the future? Um, obviously, We've seen meal kits get to um, restaurant, I guess, quality and chef meal kits get to a point. How do you see that evolving into the future? Kind of what's next in that kind of space? Well, I think for us, you know, it could potentially lead to kind of more, um, more involvement. Um, so the experience part, you know, is there a video involved? You know, our kits currently come with, um, with a playlist, you know, with a printed menu, we did a St. Patrick's Day box that had a board game. It comes with, with shots for that one, in fact, or a, you know, a whiskey drink rather than a shot. So I think there's a level of interaction. And I think when people go out to eat in restaurants, it's not only about great food, but it's about ambience. It's about service. It's about people watching. And I think that's the whole, that's what we pay for. It's that ambience. It's, you know, watching the waiter glide across the room and, and serve something great and the amazement on people's faces. Um, and I think for us, we don't only want to provide great quality food, but we want to, to take you to a different place. And I think a lot of the times with the music, you know, people that would have seen our Chinese New Year with Andrew Wong in February yeah. would have had this great kind of three hour playlist. And the music was just the most fun. You know, we had some kind of Chinese rap. There was some classical music, some jazz and lounge music. And I think if you play that and get, al you know, get along with, uh, with the vibes and the intentions of the evening, you can be transported to somewhere else whilst enjoying your great food. And that it's really about elevating that customer experience. Do you think there's an opportunity for things like um, uh, plateware or kind of tablescaping or that kind of thing within, within the proposition as well into the future? Yeah, I mean, I'm laughing because, um, you know, we've kind of partnered with, and it's taken a while actually, but, uh, a great friend of mine called Paul Goodfellow, who owns Goodfellows. Uh, and they they look after a lot of the best chefs in the country with plateware and, and table settings. And, you know, a lot of the great things that we see on Great British Menu, they create all of yeah. that. Um, and so I think, you know, last year during lockdown, Paul created Goodfellows at home and it allows you to buy those incredible plates, you know, per piece. Um, so the box that we've recently done with Gareth features some of Paul's plates and you know imminently you'll be able to buy those off of the goodfellows website and and create that kind of table table setting and i think you know i think that's really important that you know the food is the food is is a very very big part of it but really it's exactly about the kind of tablescape and when we did chinese new year with andrew you know we set a competition for for the best laid table because you just have to think about layers and texture and height yeah. color you know does that work with this dish and I kind of gave some instructions. I think it's really important before you cook, you have to think about what you're going to put the food on. Yeah. And, you know, when you're frying something that's delicate or, you know, expensive and of value, you need to be able to put that on the plate and serve it. And so I kind of suggest get all of your plates ready, make a small post-it note and, uh, and lay everything out. So, you know, when it's time to go, you're going to have this incredible experience and it's going to look stunning. 
it almost feels like it's um, bringing some of the the hints and tips from um, the ki the commercial kitchen, the chef kitchen, to the domestic kitchen as well. In what you're in what you're saying, helping people to think about how they're going to how they're going to serve and the preparation and the almost the maison place really, of, yeah. of, as well as the you know the food itself. Yeah, I think I think it's really important to consider all of these things, and I think. I think over the last kind of 10, 15 years, you know, with YouTube, people have become great home cooks. You know, when I started cooking, that didn't exist. And, um, you know, you had to work hard in restaurants to learn skills and techniques. And, you know, nowadays, my, my brother-in-law can cook, you know, he's a, he's a pretty impressive cook because of, because of YouTube and, and sous vide at home and, you know, what we have now on the TV. Um, so I think it's that kind of next level. How can we educate uh, the kind of home consumer, how can we help them cook smarter and better at home? And yeah. that isn't always about hours in the kitchen. It's about kind of smart time management, good mise en place, as you said, table presentation. But I think what we do is we provide them something that they can't do at home. Yeah. So anybody can kind of braise a piece of beef, but we try and provide something different that's, you know, we do, we do all the hard work for you ultimately. So all of the kind of skill, we de-skill the box. So, you know, everything that's really difficult or requires days and days of preparation is what we provide. And then at home, it's really the kind of finishing touches and a small amount of cooking to empower the home cook. Yeah, okay. Can you give us an example of, you said that you, you take the hard work out, you know, the things that take days and days. Can you give us an example of that? Yeah, I mean, I think, I think a great example actually is, a, is, a, is an opportunity that we're running at the moment with a great chef called Gareth Watt. Um, and, Ultimately, it's a barbecue box, but it isn't. This guy is, is one of the hottest chefs, or if not the hottest chef in the UK at the moment, whose food is incredible and probably the most unique in the UK, which I think is why he's so exciting. It's all about kind of delivering that big impact of flavor, texture, and lots of surprises. And this, this experience is, is four courses, uh -huh. um, you know, four dishes, but some of those sources Gareth's char stew pork is a kind of eight year development uh, process. Wow. You know, the refinement of the sauces and the glazes. If you look at our allergens list and the recipes that we again publish online, it's, it's three days work before the client gets it. Yeah. So although you may think that this is a simple process of barbecue and reheating and, and putting them through the oven and brushing or dipping, you know, we're, we're kind of koji brining meats you know, lots of seasonings and kind of flavor development. And some of those processes take three days before we send it to you. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, that's partly why some of these things cost money because there's so such time consuming aspects to, to the product. But equally, that's why you get this incredible flavor. And that's, you know, why he's Michelin starred, you know, top good food guide. That's why he's Gareth Ward. Yeah, no, brilliant. I will talk more about that in, in a, a second, sure. but a great, great, great example of, of that. Um, I wanted to ask you, obviously, restaurant quality meal kits are very relevant in a in a lockdown world. But how do you see this opportunity now that hospitality is, op you know, is uh, open for business or we at the full openings, you know, delayed by um, by by a month. But it effectively, hospitality is open for business. You know, how do you see that opportunity post uh, lockdown? Well, I think what I think it's really done is probably given us a taste for for restaurant quality food at home and I think yeah. you know what I like to say a lot is that you know home dining shouldn't be boring you know we don't kind of eat boring food at home and I just think life is too short for something yeah. dull you know that doesn't mean that you need to eat foie gras or caviar but you know you should be able to have great food at home it shouldn't cost the earth and uh, and that's really important to have a great life and I think COVID's not only really taught us but you know people that can't get to some of these restaurants, yeah. uh, a lot of them are obviously in London, you know, if they're in the Lake District, some of those restaurants are a three hour drive or a four hour train, you know, that might require a 60 pound train ticket, a hundred pound hotel, that's yeah. before a couple of hundred pound dinner. So all of a sudden for two of you, that's a kind of five, 600 pound experience could be a lot higher and it, it could be considerably less, but I think to, to get a taste of some of these chefs up and down the country that's a lot of money for some people. Uh, it was, it's a lot of money for everybody. Um, and so I think we provide that opportunity that if you're in Scotland, you know, we can send you Tom Aitken, a Tom Aitken experience. Um, and that doesn't mean it's exactly what you're gonna get in his restaurant, but it's a taste of what he's about. It's his style, it's his menu. The quality of food is definitely still there. 
So I think, again, we can kind of transport people up and down the country. And I think separate to that, obviously, COVID is easing. And, you know, in a four more weeks, we're allowed to, uh, to kind of be normal. But I think there's a, still a small level of fear and people are perhaps scared to go out and dine, be in a full restaurant uh, area. So I think people are now going to focus more on great home experiences. You know, we're going to entertain more at home. And that isn't always just a, you know, a 50 pound Chinese on a Friday night. We might yeah. really think about how can we have a heightened experience? How can we deliver wow, the wow factor? And I yeah. think that's where, where star chefs can really play a big role. Yeah, and I've, I've thought about instances, many instances actually, where I bought a restaurant quality meal kit as a gift for my parents, as an example, who weren't able to travel to a different part of the country. It was a, it was a treat for them, and you know, also with you know people with you know young young families and and those types of things wanting to s still celebrate, but you know, you know, babysitting and the associated costs are prohibitive. Then having something like this in their own home, I could see yeah, lots of examples how um, even in a you know post uh, COVID world that um, this is very very uh, very very relevant. You also mentioned retail, um, and is this is this something that you hope to kind of revisit? Um, do you think this type of thing could work in a, in a retail concept as well? I think elements of it, absolutely. And, um, you know, again, a year ago, I started talking to um, a retailer, and that's really where our business is kind of driving, because at-home experiences are great, but really we want the volume, we want to showcase this food nationwide, and again, I talk about the talent. We want to showcase the talent and um, kind of educate these people on who these great chefs are, what they're doing, why they're so fantastic. So for us as a business, we're trying to drive into retail. Um, we're in talks with a retailer at the moment, very early stages. But I think there's an opportunity there for this. And if that's in smaller components, it could be, again, um, holiday and kind of festival opportunities. Um, but I really feel I really feel retail is the way forward. That's brilliant. Can you tell me a little bit about your kind of deeper motivation or purpose for launching um, Star Chefs? What is it that you're ultimately trying to achieve? Well, I think I think a big thing is really kind of showcasing this talent. I think right. there's a lot of you know I talk about some of them as kind of unsung heroes. Some of these chefs aren't so well known. They don't have Michelin stars. They're not on the television. Um, yet they're incredible and i think you know also there's there's not necessarily a lot of money in this industry as people think you know the restaurant industry is a really hard industry to be in the margins are very very low um it only takes a few no-shows to, to kind of lose any profit opportunity um so for me it's about kind of showcasing the best chef talent and some of that are you know kind of michelin star chefs like tom Aitkins that everyone knows you know television favorite great british menu judge um, incredible chef, iconic, been around for a long, long time. And then some of them are people like Robin Gill, you know, he's an incredible chef, trained at Le Manoir, you yeah. know, had experience at Noma, sorry, Noma, you know, experience at Three Star in Italy. And now, you know, Robin kind of 10, 12 years ago opened the dairy in Clapham. And I think for me at the time, it was a real game changer in restaurant in London. Yeah. Um, and how they served food, the presentation, the quality of the style, it was unique. And I think, um, you know, I think Robin's a real talent and now he has three or four restaurants. And I think to kind of showcase some of his skill and food nationwide is what we're about. You know, another chef, for example, is Ben Marks. Uh -huh. So Ben Marks has a restaurant in Stoke Newington, uh, uh -huh. East London uh -huh. called Perilla. And it's probably one of the chefs, the chefs of the industry's most favorite restaurant in the country. You know, I feel the guy is absolutely incredible. It's a very uh, vegetable led menu. So really good kind of vegetable and vegan products, which is obviously on the increase and really important to us and sustainability. Um, however, you know, he's not in a five star hotel. Uh -huh. He's uh -huh. in East London, which, um, you know, not everybody ventures to for great food. But I feel that if we transported his restaurant to the Mandarin Oriental or the Savoy, he could have two Michelin stars. Um, so I think the quality of his food and the experience is absolutely world class. Yet he's an unsung hero that nobody knows about. Yeah. Uh, so I think really we want to try and showcase and drive this talent to the next level and, and help everybody like that succeed.
and bringing that to a, a national audience, I guess. That's to a national audience. And if yeah. that's through, you know, meal kits or something in retail, yeah, anything, anything we can do to help drive and support that. And that in turn is just going to encourage more people turn into hospitality as a career. Yeah, okay. Can you, can you, and you've mentioned a couple of them already, but can you tell us about some of the talent that you've featured so far and some of the things that they've done with you? Yeah, so the, the first experience we did was, you know, the most exciting um, was with Andrew Wong, who yeah. has a restaurant, A Wong in Victoria. And at the time, you know, he had one Michelin star. And, you know, I said to him in December, there's an opportunity here for us to do Chinese New Year you know, while COVID's going on, so a kind of at-home experience. And I was thinking four or five dishes, the sort of thing that I like to, you know, if I have a Chinese, I'll order four or five dishes with my partner and we'll try a few things and have a great experience. That evolved into about 12, 14 dishes. Um, <laughs> but it was most it was most incredible. And, and again, just before we launched, Andrew received his second mission on Star, um, I think in February. But, you know, the guy was already hugely popular, has a really big following. Yeah bought a masterclass on MasterChef the Professionals last year. So I think he was already in the limelight, but the opportunity provided, again, people nationwide with this incredible food that unless you can get to Victoria, unless you can get to a table, and unless you can afford it, you wouldn't necessarily experience that at home. So our, our menu of Andrew was just incredible, you know, 12, 14 dishes, we had this incredible playlist, yeah. Chinese lanterns on the table, Amazing. you know, sent chopsticks and napkins and um, obviously a beautiful video. And the food was incredible. It's, it's not the sort of thing that you experience in many restaurants. It's very, very unique. And I think that's really the basis of what we're about. It's something that you can't get elsewhere and you can't do this at home. You know, a Andrew's almost 40 years old and this is what he's been doing his whole life. And... Um, you can't learn that at home unless you've worked in these kitchens and, and had a 20 year career in food. If I could sum up Chinese New Year in one word, it would be food. What I hope that people will get from this meal with us is a real sense of love, um, a sense of generosity, and the real uh, enjoyment uh, and happiness that you get from eating with one another at this special time of year. This box really isn't about cooking uh, restaurant food at home. It's about putting together a delicious meal to celebrate the most important uh, occasion in the Chinese calendar. We've taken the hard part out and we've left you with the fun finishing parts um, in heating and just a little bit of wok frying and a little bit of glazing just to put the finishing touches onto this meal. I'm Andrew Wong. Happy New Year. Gong Hei Fat Choi. And I have to ask you, what, what was some of the feedback that you received from uh, people that had that box? <laughs> what did people yeah, say about I mean, it? It sounds extraordinary. Incredible, actually. And I just, I remember a couple, you know, I've probably even still got screenshots. A couple of people that had, they had three generations of Chinese family in different locations eating that. And again, having something like <laughs> this on Zoom, and it kind of really taken them back to their roots and kind of family tradition. Yeah. You know, and lots of people saying, oh, that's the greatest superior stock, you know, in the world. How can we get hold of it? Can you sell it? Blah, blah, blah. So I think, I think there was a lot of people that just got a real taste of home, a real yeah. taste of authentic food, something very, very different. We had this incredible um, scalded kingfish dish. Uh -huh which when I read the menu, I thought, oh, not sure if our clients are going to get that. Yeah. And then we spent a couple of days with Andrew developing the menu and he showed us, you know, it's almost a sashimi sliced and grated kingfish. He scolds that with kind of boiling hot oil. Um, and that's after a bit of kind of roasted garlic puree and chili sauce and other garnishes. And it's just one of the most incredible things I've ever had in my life. It looks stunning. It's the real wow factor. So I think if you're at home, what we try to say is we've, done all the hard work for you and we've maybe given you two opportunities to shine as a home cook yeah. and this is one that we're asking you to um you know to be really confident get your oil sizzling hot pour a little bit over the fish and it just brings a real real wow factor to your dinner yeah that's, that's absolutely amazing are you doing another one this <laughs> the next Chinese well, year? i'm definitely going to be speaking to him because <laughs> it was very very popular we could have sold it a few times over um yeah. so we'd love to be working with andrew again for sure
Yeah, no, brilliant. And I'm assuming that there are upcoming experiences planned. Can you tell us about some of the talent that you are going to be featuring next? And, and you know, what is it that they're um, that you, you get as part of that experience? Yeah, so first of all, um, whilst we're in summer, we're running a summer experience with Gareth Ward. Oh, so Gareth is chef patron of Michelin star in a sheer hall in Wales. Yeah. Um, and so he's on the kind of coast of Wales, real rural area. Um, and this guy is all about the produce. You know, so we have some kind of A5 Wagyu beef. There's some black cod, which people always think of Nobu and they think it's that miso glazed cod. But yeah, black cod is an actual fish from Canada. So this this fish has come with come from Canada and it is obviously miso glazed. But it's just the most incredible, tender, buttery, sweet and delicate fish. It's just a real incredible experience. And along with the Wagyu, you know, it's it's A5 grade Wagyu. And it's not necessarily about feeding people or fattening them up. It's about giving them a taste of something absolutely incredible. We're not going to eat Wagyu every day. That no. comes with a, a black bean sauce, green pepper mayonnaise. And it's just it's it's stunning. Um, then we have a char siu pork. Um, and that comes from a butcher friend of Gareth's in Nottinghamshire. And I think the pigs are fi uh, finished feeding on frazzles. Um, but again, this is a three day process with the pork. So it's a beautiful piece of pork belly, really nicely layered, perfect for bacon, yeah. you know, koji brined, wow. it's really delicate. And that's warmed uh, gently in the oven for an hour before barbecuing and finishing with this really stunning kind of char siu glaze served with a plum sauce. Um, and then our last dish, as I look down at my notes here, is a, a duck dish. Yeah. And these ducks, again, from Silver Hill Farm in Ireland, the same as where Andrew Wong buys his ducks and all of the top chefs um, kind of sourcing duck and peaking duck are buying it from Silver Hill Farm in Ireland. And the duck is kind of lightly blowtorched, you know, gently warm. I'm hoping I'm not making you hungry here. You are. Uh, <laughs> lightly warmed through the oven. And that's served, served with a hoisin sauce. And then we make this kind of cucumber and spring onion salad. And we have these yeah. kind of baby cucumbers that are pickled in a kind of light pickling liquor and dressed with a spring onion oil. I'm making myself hungry now. Yeah. And that, again, that's served with kind of bao buns, but it's just incredible to eat on its own. And you know what this box is really about is a, is a box of kind of flavor, wow experiences. There's four really good proteins there that are really, really filling, really rich, but ultimately just the best quality produce we can get our hands on. So all of these are Gareth suppliers that we're working with, so that integrity through the chain. Yeah, I was about to ask you about that, actually. It sounds like, and as one of the things that comes through for me is that you're taking those recipes, not just those recipes, but those 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 supply chains as well. Uh, and that, that is part of the, the proposition as well. You're not just getting the duck from a another supplier. It's actually maintaining the integrity of the, the proposition through the, um, the, the, the chef or restaurant supply chains as well. Yeah, I think it has to. I think for me, the most important thing, you know, I feel that I'm a bit of a kind of uh, a gatekeeper for the chef. So yeah. they have to be happy. And if Gareth Ward isn't happy or Andrew Wong wasn't happy, they wouldn't put their name to it. Two things that makes that makes it a bit of an expensive experience for, for everybody, including ourselves. You know, we're not getting rich out of this. We're providing a great experience because we have the best produce available in the country, second to none. You know, nobody can say that that's cheap pork belly or it's bad quality or it's grisly. Yeah. This is incredible. So really, I think that integrity is just one of the most important things. And I think if the chefs are happy, you know, they're going to be proud to promote it. The consumers are going to have the best experience. And again, I think as Gareth kind of mentions on the video, uh, so we do a promo video for, for each chef that we work with that kind of showcases the food, showcases the experience. And I think he just mentions, you know, you you can't just do this with a normal piece of fish no. or a normal piece of uh, pork. It has to be, it has to be well reared, well fed, you know, well slaughtered, well handled, well prepared. And, you know, all of those processes kind of add cost and time. And I think that's really how we get exceptional produce and exceptional kind of uh, experiences. I'm Gareth Ward and this is Barbecue in a Sea of Star. I was sent here Wong's Chinese New Year box and I thought the quality was incredible. So there it is, we, we're together and we've smashed it in. Quality of the ingredients is number one, can't cook 
something special out of something that is rubbish, especially with what we do. So you've got a simple pickled cucumber and spring onion salad in there with onion oil in it. You know, not for the duck, but it goes well with everything, just get it down here. This is uh, beef black bean in a sear style, so beautiful wagyu, really gently over the coals and just keep that natural, beautiful jelly flavour. Black corn is this beautiful, obviously miso, sweet, just beautiful flakes part, super fatty. For the duck, we either we give it a little blowtorch if you don't want it warm on the skin, in the oven, 20, 25 minutes, let it rest, crisping the skin up on the barbecue, hoisting the sauce, and the pickled spring onion and cucumber salad. Chassis Pork is an eight-year project, and every recipe is an ongoing project. I'm Gareth Ward, I'm gonna smash beers in with flavour. <laughs> And uh, is this barbecue box something that I could take and you know create on my on my my Weber charcoal grill at home, or do I need some kind of specialist kit to be able to do it? No, nope, absolutely. So uh, so the box itself is available for the duration of the summer. If I just give that little plug, yeah. So you know, ideally, while the sun's out, we'll be running it for kind of ten to twelve weeks. Yeah. Available for delivery every Friday as a limited number. Um, and ultimately, you kind of warm the proteins through the oven to bring them up to temperature. And they're finished on the barbecue. Yeah, so okay. this isn't where you cook a sausage in a burger and, and frazzle it until it's burnt. You know, the, the barbecue is used as a technique to impart flavor and smoke and texture. But everybody should be able to do this. You know, we provide instructions. You can see the video. Uh, really, really simple. And I think in under kind of 45 minutes, sorry, maybe, an, maybe about an hour because the meat, one of the pork dishes goes in the oven for an hour. So in just, in just over an hour, you can create this experience at home. The items are put in the oven, finished on the barbecue, and you can have restaurant quality food with your friends and family in pretty quick time. And I think what we try and get the balance out with Star Chefs is that you don't spend three hours cooking. And this is where I think where we do all the hard work for you. Yeah. The balance of what the consumer would like to do at home, yeah. what they can do, and maybe what's more appropriate, because all of these experiences are designed to be shared with family and friends. And ultimately, you should be hosting and having fun. Yeah. So I think they're real, you know, they're real good experiences that you can put it in the oven. You can walk away. We try and manage your time so that you're not tied to the stove. Um, again, finished finished on the barbecue, plated up in a few easy steps, and you've just got the most incredible barbecue experience. And I assume it comes with a, a effectively a, a cook along style video, does it, that shows you all the different things that you need to do. Yeah, so we do a very detailed, a very detailed list of instructions, a very detailed list of allergens, which again is really, really important because yeah. you know in this in this box, for example, you know that there are so many different processes and, and ingredients that you just need to be super clear of what's involved here, you know. Um, and I think we make that easy enough for people to follow. This yeah. you do not have to be a chef to to follow these experiences. You know, these should be stripped back, kind of dummy proof that any, anybody can prepare and serve again, because we've de-skilled it and taken the hard work out for you. Yeah, okay. And so you've got the barbecue Gareth uh, Ward box. What, um, do you have any others? Uh, yeah, so that one that, excited that, about? that we're really excited about is a cook along live with Ollie Dubu. Okay. Uh, so again, big fans of Ollie for a long, long time. Um, one of the most incredible chefs in the country and just, just one of the most loveliest chaps and most professional chefs, you know, I kind of know. Um, and we're really excited because I think nobody else has really done a cook along live. Yeah. And this, you know, this is a Michelin star chef. Ollie is an incredible talent. Um, and so what we are planning to do is a four course menu for the summer. Okay. We were looking to do this in June and that had to get delayed a little bit. So we now have a date of September the 3rd. Okay. And the plan is, you know, you can go online view the menu, order the box, and then on a Friday evening, you know, log on to the link that we send you, and you can be in the kitchen live with Ollie Dubu, and this will be a hosted session. Wow. So this, this is ultimately going to be a kind of, uh, you know, a Saturday kitchen style show yeah. with the host and Ollie, guiding you through four dishes of incredible restaurant quality food, teaching you some of those kind of chefy techniques um, that you might not have the confidence to do yourself. And, and, and it involves, you know, then you go back, sit down, enjoy your first course, come back, do the main, do a little bit of prep for dessert. And then after the dinner, there'll be a, a kind of a question and answer, answer session with Ollie. Amazing. So I think it's a great opportunity, again, for anybody who can't get to hide or one of Ollie's restaurants yeah. to really get a taste of his personality, try his food, 
learn some new techniques and you know maybe ask him a question about you know what he likes to do in his spare time or where he likes to eat and I think what we're really about is just kind of bridging that gap and, and bringing the talent to the consumer bringing the talent to to uh, to people's homes that it's sounds incredible actually yeah, it's an experience. You're, you're comfortable uh you know in your dining room yet you know 30 seconds ago you're cooking with one of the best chefs in the country and i think i think that's a, an incredible experience and um to do that simultaneously is really nice because i think the box experience where you're following the steps or you're watching a video is nice and you get some great food but to be doing that in real time with an incredible chef you know that's yeah. pretty unique so yeah. we're really excited about that really excited to be working with ollie um and that will be coming in september the third brilliant sounds amazing um lastly i mean like us and our work through the food people foundation and chefs in schools supporting the next generation when it comes to food health and education is clearly important to you as well how do you do this and, and i suppose ultimately why is it important to you well I think I learned of this charity again, kind of 15 or so years ago, maybe even 20. And I think so we work with a charity called Chefs Adopt a School. Yeah. And they're part of the Royal Academy of Culinary Arts, um, yeah. headed up by Brian Turner. And ultimately they send chefs into schools nationwide and provide a small education on food, nutrition, cooking and hospitality. And, you know, I feel really passionately about this because I think Especially, especially what's happened recently with, with the government and COVID, and some people think there's been a few mistakes. I think it's really important we educate the children of the future, yeah. you know, what is important and how important food is and how integral, you know, kind of organic and great ingredients are. Not everything can be imported from Europe, how important farming is, yeah. you know, where food comes from. And I think if we can educate children at, you know, five to 10 years old, of why that's so important, a balanced diet, nutrition, obesity. Definitely. We're kind of really gearing them up for life because these guys are not only gonna be the chefs, they're gonna be lawyers, they're gonna be politicians and doctors of tomorrow. So I think the education for me is just the most important from a very, very young age. You know, I think at, at 14, 15 years old in a, in a senior school, it's potentially too late and some yeah, of those lessons have been learned. Yeah. Um, so for me, I think trying to give back and help educate a kind of really good food you know something that we definitely didn't have you know a really good food education on why it's important and the difference and um you know i could probably talk about this all day but i, I just think nothing is more important than kind of food education we need to we need to be sustainable we need to look after our planet and look after ourselves and ultimately we can do all of that through this kind of big circle of food and regenerative farming and it's just so so important yeah, no, it is absolutely. And we passionately believe that the next generation having a healthy relationship with food, understanding more about um, food and drink, food and drink systems, the issues that are important within it. Um, but also at a really basic level, you know, providing um, qu you know, quality food and drink experiences in schools day to day for people yeah. i mean that's certainly one of the things that we're very excited about through our work with chefs in schools is of course that is about education but it's also about um, incredible day-to-day -day food experiences in that kind of school meal environment as well and i think part of that is showcasing that you know day-to-day uh, -day, uh, you can have uh, great food and that encourages that that healthy relationship that curiosity around food and drink as well so yeah we we're definitely both on the same page there yeah, and the, I, I, the importance know, of it also kind of stating the obvious about brain development you know and we've recently just had a baby which is highly exciting um and i think i think just nutrition is just so important for that kind of brain development and functionality yeah. and i think the better, you know, it's a bit like a Formula One car. You wouldn't put cheap unleaded in the Formula One car. No. Why do we do this to our bodies? And so for me, you know, I want to give my, you know, daughter the best food we can afford and the best food possible with without any exception. And I think we should be doing that across the country. And if we need government support, we need government support. You know, I think not everybody can afford, you know, organic meat and, and that's absolutely fine. So, you know, if we can help in schools provide great food, it provides better attention span they're going to learn more you know intelligence is going to increase and we'll have we'll have kind of smarter children you know looking after us in the future and, and running the nation and i think 
what tell me what's more important in the world than this yeah absolutely and that that feels like a, a great point on which to uh, to wrap up this episode of uh, in conversation with David, it's been uh, an absolute pleasure to speak to you. And on behalf of uh, the few people and the In Conversation with audience, thanks so much for joining me, for telling us about Star Chefs, your story so far, and those two incredible boxes. I'm definitely going to be uh, getting uh, one of those uh, barbecue boxes, those uh, Gareth Ward barbecue boxes. And I'm li I was literally salivating as we were talking. I was doing it to myself. <laughs> so it's been a real pleasure to speak to you. Thanks ever so much, David, for joining me today. Thank you for having me. It's been an absolute pleasure. So do join our TFP community for the details of our latest In Conversation with episodes, as well as the latest free to access food and drink trends for site. Visit the foodpeople.co.uk and complete your details at the footer of the page. On behalf of David and myself, thanks for listening to the Food People In Conversation with. And as always, I'll leave you with one question. How are you shifting the future of food and drink? Thanks for listening.